Welcome, everybody. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show coming out of Studio 44. It is the 18th of August, 2021. And there's some more controversy popping off today with John Mara and getting a little bit of backup with from Ron Rivera, his other contemporary on the NFL competition committee. Not a real big fan of these guys right now. We'll get into the taunting penalty before we are taunting rule change as we get into it. We did talk about uh, Lemmy on Monday, but uh, producer James is back in the building. We're doing a rare Wednesday show. Usually he does dark side tonight, but he did dark side yesterday. How did that go? It went good. Yeah. Got a little choppy at the end. A little, uh, a little choppy. I would say, Yeah, I think a lot choppy. Yeah. I thought you were going to take more. Why would I? <laughs> God only knows. So apparently uh, producer James took a chop from, uh, is, is it the owner of AWR? Yeah. Uh, Rosario Rodriguez, a.k.a. Alberto Del Frito. Yeah. Ain't no cheap chips. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's the rumor on the street. I don't know too much about that, but uh, I was able to capture that on, on, uh, on film. Where can they find that? YouTube, go to YouTube or go to, you can find us on Facebook, follow uh, Dark Side of the Mic on Facebook. So we're... So that video's up there on y'all's page. Yeah. Well, um, not like isolated in the clip, but it's, it's at a minute. You go to the minute, I mean the hour marker, okay. right at an hour. Right oh, there. so you didn't want to take that, what I what I sent you? Oh, um, I probably will then. <laughs> yeah. He's like, go watch the show first and then we'll give you the highlights. Yeah, I'll give you a clip. Um... Hard Knocks was last night. Getting to the Dallas Cowboys a little bit, you know. Apparently, uh, Ezekiel Elliott. You haven't seen it, right? No. Have you seen? Did you see the trailer? Yeah. The the one that's like a minute fourteen and see Ezekiel Elliott looking for baby powder. Oh no, I didn't. See you that. didn't see that one? No. Apparently, Ezekiel Elliott needs some baby powder. He's chafing. Apparently, uh, he put so much baby powder. He said, "If you see any smoke coming from behind me, it's baby powder." <laughs> so apparently, he loaded up quite a bit during uh. I guess practice whenever they're out there in, in Oxnard. I guess it gets a little dry. Maybe I wonder if Oxnard's close to like any mountains out there. That's the only thing I would think that would make him that way, make him feel that way. Or else he needs to maybe hydrate more. Dude, if you're not sweating in your nether regions, something may be right. <laughs> Is that where that comes from? You're not sweating. So Well, you're like- yeah, you're gonna get I mean, he's either not he's either not hydrated enough or he may have like some special you know, some special garments that kind of wicks the, you know, the uh, sweat away from your body. So you don't feel kind of like, you know, swamp ass. Yeah. And then, or, you know, Tom, you know, Tom Brady does, right? What? With his centers. If, when he ha- he doesn't want to feel your, you know, clammy crack. So what he tells these, his uh, centers to do is they got to put towels down there. So like, you got to like load up this girdle, put towels down there. And, uh, you know, put on your pants and get ready to go to practice. So it's like I a mean, pad, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just think about it. You got this, you got this towel running from, you know, you know, for Tom Brady, for Tom it's Brady, for Tom Brady. It's for, yeah. Tom's like, you're going to do this. Yeah. And I'm sure Tom probably gives him like a, a nice bonus at the end of the year. Cause I mean, think about it, dude. Like if you're this big grown, hairy, you know, man sweating, Tom's like, I don't want to smell that on my hands. It's probably what he learned it from was like, he got this stink on his head. He can't get it off. So uh, I don't know. Dak Prescott in there on a pitch count from hard knocks. Lots of highlights. Jerry Jones is, I want to see more of Jerry. He's just not on there enough for me. The last two episodes, he's like, he gets one scene, one scene. He's opening a, you know, a breakfast sandwich from God only knows what fast food joint. I'm like, Jerry, you're 90 years old. Why are you eating that shit? Like, I know why I shouldn't eat it, but you're, I mean, maybe he, maybe it, maybe he's like Warren Buffett. He eats McDonald's every morning. I don't know when you own a bunch of the stock or shares. I'm pretty sure you probably want to eat that every morning, but for Jerry being a, well, so is Buffett. They're billionaires. They can do whatever the hell they want, I guess. Huh? What do billionaires, what do billionaires eat? Apparently McDonald's. Apparently they're loving it. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably came from there. They have this huge setup. I've told you about it. Yeah. And, uh, probably somebody was like, send his assistant was like, uh, send Jerry a, uh, egg and cheese and ham McMuffin, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, eh. well, then yesterday he was talking about CD lamb was the focus point of yesterday. He was like the star who was the focal point. And Michael Irvin gets on there and talks about CD. And of course everybody goes around CD, this CD, that. 
And then CD, you know, he's packing up to go home, what have you. And apparently he, he's a dog lover. That's something I was kind of shocked about. I was like, CD, a dog lover? Uh, I don't know if I can five with all that, but most people are dog lovers. Are you a dog lover? I'm not necessarily a dog lover, but I do have a dog. How is that going? It's, it's, it's all right, man. Ooh. It's all Ooh. right. Ooh. Ooh, nobody saw y'all. Nobody saw your face. So maybe that's a good thing. It's, all right. it's going. It's great, dude. I love it. Oh, no, that's that's <laughs> awesome how you do that when the camera's up. That's awesome. But yeah. uh, you know, are the are are the uh are the are the kids pulling their weight with it? Yeah, dog? yeah, they definitely they're okay. they're the ones who take care of them. I don't really gotta do much. Today, um You gotta since, get on them to take care of the dog? No, no. Oh, okay. No, they're they're on it. But um today I got off I get off early on Wednesdays yeah. and um now they're at school, so when I get home nobody's there. So, you know, the dog was, you know, in the, he has, he's in a little kennel, yeah. So I took him out, took him to walk and that, all dude. that stuff. Those people are going to come after you. It's not like I keep my kid in cages or anything. I mean, well, if you put him in a room, it's technically a cage. Who do you think I am, Joe Biden? Hey, man, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, it's a trend with those people. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say about all that. Uh, yeah, man, but Hard Knocks was cool last night. I want to see more Jerry. I want to see more Mike. They led with Mike in the beginning, you know. Mike is like, you know, we're a popular team, but we need to do this and we need to do that. And I'm like... Mike, all you really need to do is just win. Then you could just, like, not worry about anything. But I think that was kind of a a focal point. They seem to be more energetic. I don't know if that's going to be translate to Ws, but we did get to see the Connor Williams, Aaron Donald slam last night in a very highly edited, great lighting, you know, nice. in a very refined way. I was like, it didn't look as cool on the raw footage than this one. Like, the raw footage was... It was more of like a, like a, you could feel it. You know, you could see the dust cloud. This one, it was like, as soon as it happened, they let everybody rush in. It's almost like they cut it and then they cut it to where it was seamless. It was very quick, but it was like an angle here and then an angle there. And then everybody rushed in. So you really couldn't see any, like, you know, the fighting on the ground. But, um, did you hear some, uh, some, some jaw jacking? Fuck yeah. yeah. All this taunting rules going in. We don't want people to be mean to each other. Well, I hate to break this to you, but if you played the game, if you've been a part of any combat sports, if you trained in any kind of violent sports, I hate to break this to you, but you're mean if you punch somebody in the mouth. You're mean if you crack someone coming over the middle. You're mean if you're literally fighting with another human to get to a pig pigskin. You're literally fighting. I and it, but we don't we don't want to let our children see anybody being upstaged. We don't want the children. I hate to break this to you, but those children who are playing want to go crack some heads. I hate to break. You don't want to teach them to go crack heads, but that's the that's what they want to do. That's just how it happens. There's just I hate to break this to folks, but there is this innate urge to invoke your will on another human being because why? Because it's fun. But we can't, we don't want to be mean, right? We don't want to fire people, right? We don't want to cut people. Like, we don't want to cut Timmy. Oh, Tim Tabo. Was it mean for the Jaguars and Urban Meyer to cut Tim? I think it would be if you cut him, he didn't have a job anymore. Is it mean when you get fined? Because you maybe had this sudden urge of excitement after a big play where you look at your opponent and you just give them a quick flex of the muscles and now it's a 15-yard penalty and you're out maybe 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, $50,000. And if you do it again? It's going to be more money. And you're out of the game. And then you're if it's in the, in the same game, you could be disqualified. Load of horse shit. We're going to take a break before we show these clips from Mr. Mara of the New York Giants and Coach Rivera of the Washington football team. I was going to call them the WTFs, the WFTs. Uh, but before we do that, uh, college football is in 10 days. High school football is in eight days. Shout out to the Lockhart Lions. They're going to be scrimmaging Bass Shop tomorrow. Uh, go check, you'll, you can go check them out at reconathlete.com or you can go to Lion Pride Sports Broadcast on Facebook. We will have the links. Recon Athlete will have the links. I shouldn't say we, they. Recon Athlete will have the links to watch that scrimmage. So if you don't want to travel, if you can't travel, uh, if, you, if you're in the military and you have a family member who's on the team, great way to watch that. If you're from Bass Shop and you don't want to travel or you can't make it or if you're at work, great opportunity to go to that website. Click the link. 
it'll it'll have something there for you to click on and boom you'll have the football game you can stream it if you have some kind of streaming device or if you're on your computer hook it up to your tv watch it that way but before we do that i hear spotify is doing better yeah i hear it's kind of growing a little bit yes it is talk to them so um yeah man come on come on guys come on don't take that much time we're going to break now while you're waiting on us to come back all you do you pull out pull out your little smartphone um yeah, go to Spotify, search Paul Rodriguez Show, and um, hit that follow button. And if you're not subscribed to us, subscribe to us on the YouTube.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show. Let's get into the sound bites that were given out early, later last night and earlier today by Ron Rivera and John Marr. We'll go ahead and kick it off with John Marr and get a glimpse of what his thought process was uh, as he kind of spoke for himself and as well as the competition committee. All right, I think we kind of got the glimp, the gist of what he was saying, and I and I don't know where John's kind of coming from. I mean, John's a very well established member of the NFL. He is a third generation owner of the New York Giants. He's kind of not really had to do much in his life. I'm not saying he's never competed or anything, but he's never had to go. He's never know what it is to struggle, and I think a lot of times these NFL players understand what it is to struggle, go through a lot of their lifetimes have going without and for I think for someone like him for Mr. Marr to kind of go at and make this this point of interest a, a matter that the NFL wants to spearhead just to me just seems a, a little suspect and I think he called up Ron Rivera Ron Rivera is another member of the competition committee I think there's a lot of pe people up there that you kind of be surprised Stephen Jones of the Cowboys is a member as well as Ozzie Newsom Ozzie Newsom uh, of the Baltimore Ravens, I think also head coach uh, Mike Tomlin of the Steelers, John Elway of the of the Denver Broncos, and I think there's another few others mixed in there. But Ron Rivera also, I think, went, ran to, to the aid of Mr. Mara and had this to say uh, about also what they want to, I think, prohibit as far as why this taunting penalty will be a point of interest of the NFL. The whole concept and idea behind it is, is what we don't want is we don't want it to escalate. And so they, they tell everybody, this is an emphasis. This is what we're going we're gonna to really try and clamp down on. And traditionally, you know, if it, if it happens, especially during the preseason, it's a great time to do it, just so the players understand what the referees are going to be looking for. You know, they don't want you, you know, taunting your opponent. If you make a great play, great, be excited, but don't do it towards your opponent. That's all we're asking. That, that, that's what the rule's for. Because what we don't want is an escalation of some of the things that have happened in the past. I think last year two teams got into it where wide receivers and DBs were going at each other. You know, a year ago we had one where two teams were going at each other. I mean, you, you don't want to see that situation. Uh, first of all, that, that's not a good look for, for any sport, let alone football. And somebody's going to get hurt. And you just don't want that. And that's why they're doing it. That's what the emphasis That's why everybody's just got to relax, calm down. Let us go through this process of trying to make sure the players understand that, hey, guys, you can celebrate. You can have a good time. But let's don't taunt your opponent because we don't want the retaliation in this league. That's, we really don't because it is not a good look. And on, quite honestly, we don't need the young people to see that. You know, we don't need the, 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 the Pop Warner Pee Wee football kids seeing us act like that. They want to, they, they, we want to put it out there as professionally as possible. Old concept and idea. All right, Coach. You don't want the kids to see it. Okay, fine. But the men and women who are paying very large sums of money to watch your product and on a weekly basis, much less weekly, probably year-round, want to see these exchanges by these young men who are pretty much putting their life on the line as they perform week in and week out. There's a couple of other instances we've talked about on this show nobody has come close to talking about that being in the Super Bowl between Brady and Matthew. Nobody once talked about that. If these people would just be honest about why they want to curb this in totality, you're going to pick obscure situations like Ron Rivera, just these obscure safeties, these obscure DBs. When? What team was it? When did this event occur? If you want to identify and really nip it in the bud, why didn't we just like send a mass memo to all the coaching staffs and GMs and say, look, talk to your players. We don't want this to escalate. We don't want this to be an objective call by referees who may or may not have 
ill feelings about a player or two or many. While you could have easily handled this in-house, like you always want to do, protect the shield, y'all, and it is just my feeling, this is a virtue signal from the NFL to tell their sponsors and advertisers, we're going to try to make this more family-friendly. You're making a violent game family-friendly is oxymoronic. It makes no sense. And this is why a lot of people have a beef with the NFL. And when we when it all got political, it made it even more polarizing. And this is making the, the true hardcore NFL fans who have been there through everything from the kneeling to the flag to, you know, not having the anthem, all the bullshit, all, everything that wanted to, like, destroy the game, this, you're doing it internally. This isn't what, this isn't, you don't want to do this as a league. You don't want to have to have this come down because you're going to lose more people to college football. College football is becoming a semi-pro, almost pro entity. These young people can make money off their name, image, and likeness, and we're seeing super conferences being built. This is a warning to the NFL. You keep this bullshit up, people will leave. And they'll go, they'll probably stay on the same network on ESPN, SEC network. But you're gonna lose a lot of pe- a lot of eyeballs. And it's just it, the more and more you try to make this family, 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 it's it's gonna push people away that aren't in the family, that want to escape from their family, who want to just go watch their favorite team and enjoy some beer, have some barbecue, some snacks, and watch some grown man compete on the highest level of of, of pro football. There's women in there too. I'm sure there are. But it doesn't need to be, we don't need to make a PC version of a violent sport. Look Look at the UFC. They're more than happy playing up every stereotype there has to do with combat sports. And they're unapologetic about it. You are a 30, 40, 50 X company compared to UFC. And you're, you're literally drowning yourself right now. There, this is a game that is, was taught this, the Jack Tatum days can still be around if they're just done a little bit better. And I think we I think the NFL has done that with heads up play with heads up teaching about tackling but I hate to break this to you, grown ass men who have a little bit of an anger problem play this sport. And they're the ones who can reach that elite level because they play with a primal instinct. They play with an ability to go out there and stop their opponent from moving forward. And I hate to break this to you, but you have to do it with brute force. And if you don't believe me or you can't identify with what I'm saying, maybe you fucking didn't play. I'm fucking sorry. That's just the way it is. This is a little bit of man talk going on right now, but I'm sure there's some women out there tired of the bullshit also. If, if you don't watch your kids play, watching the sport, don't let them watch. If you don't want them to play, don't let them play. My family didn't let me play till I got to junior high. I had a lot of friends who played Pop Warner, and then they got burned the fuck out. There needs to be some leadership, and where the hell is Roger Goodell right now? Roger's on his way out. That's the th- that's the problem. I have I've been seeing lack of leadership from the top to the bottom. And there's only going to be real leaders who speak out against this. The CBA is done. The NFL knew this. They knew we're checkmate. We're getting Al River on out. We got Walt coming in. What's the first thing Walt does after they bring in this new Hawk Vision review? We're going to change the taunting penalty. We're going to add the taunting penalty. All right, go ahead. See how well that works. And I'm telling you, Mara and Rivera, watch this bite them in the ass. They're the ones who are coming out boastful. We want to we want to stop this. We want to stop this image. This is a point of interest, so we don't want the young people. We don't want to be mean. Well, I hate to break this to you, but there's winners and there's losers. That's just the way the world is. The world does not care. You can produce or you can't. And it doesn't mean you're a bad person or a bad human. It just means you weren't successful in this venture. But I bet to God you could be successful in another one. Yeah, and, and also, too, uh, it, it, it doesn't mean just because you lose, you can't go home and work on it, come back and be a winner the next week. Damn straight. You know what I mean? It's competition. 
It's mm-hmm. competition. And the and the players at this level, they know that. And Ron Rivera should know better. He should know better. He, he played for Mike Ditka on the 85 goddamn Bears. He, he knows better. But I get it. You want to be a company man. You want to step in line. I fine, whatever. I'll probably after this rant, I'll probably never be there. I don't care. I'm going to make a lane for me and my team in one way or another. Love me, hate me, or indifferent. You think they both got a check in the mail? No. What I think that they do is they gain clout. And the clout is the power. The power is the influence. That's what this is. Where the hell is Stephen Jones? Stephen, you backing this You backing this up? Mike Tomlin, you backing this up? I hear Mike Tomlin likes to get in pe- referees' ways. While they're running down the field, to stop or while the play is going on, you telling me Mike Tomlin don't talk shit? You telling me John Elway doesn't talk shit? Ozzie Newsom doesn't talk shit? Ozzie Newsom played in the goddamn Jack Tatum era. It's either one of two things: either the T is getting a little low, and I'm not talking about Lipton, or we got a lot of well aristocratic kind of individuals trying to run this league when it's played by the youngest, most talented, vicious minded young people. And I'm, when I say vicious, I mean between the goddamn whistles, let's not get crazy here because you have men who are, who have a lot of tea running through their body while they're playing. That's why they can get that big and run that fast. It's just biology, you know, just simple biology. We got to wake up here, guys. We got we got to wake up. Something's got to be something's got to be done to change this. And if it's taking eyeballs away from the game, maybe that'll work. But I don't think it will. Why are, why don't we have ex players who just retired in their thirties on these competition committees? Oh, we can't let we can't let the we can't let the players in here. We got to make sure we vet them. We got to make sure they're company, man. We got to make sure they stay in line with our message. God forbid anybody thinks outside the box, right? Protect the shield, right? Come the fuck on. There's got to be a better way to do this. There was. There what there is. There could have been a mass memo sent out, just like they did with the targeting rule. It just makes no sense, guys. Makes no sense. You got anything, Dad? Makes no sense. Let's go to break.
Welcome back, everybody. It is the Paul Rodriguez Show. Tomorrow we have the NFL continuing their week two matchups. Let's get into the Thursday matchup. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, did you watch anything from last weekend that kind of caught your eye or stuck out to you? Um, last did you weekend, get to watch the Packers? No, I didn't. I was, uh, I believe I was at work. That was Saturday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was at work. Um, but I, I did see, uh, <clears throat> I watched some Jordan Love highlights. Yeah, apparently had to check on the future. Yep. <laughs> the future is so bright they signed a, another quarterback to the team. That's how bright the future is. Man, he got Jordan Love got roasted today on Get Up between um Jeff Darlington and Jeff Saturday and Sam Macho. Jordan Love got roasted. I mean, they're like, this is the guy y'all went up in the draft to go get. And Sam Macho's trying to, like, you know, defend it. And it's like, Sam, that's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about that he's not a serviceable quarterback. Notice the word I use, serviceable. Yeah, serviceable. What they were trying to make the point was is that they picked Jordan Love too high. Jordan Love should have been drafted, without a doubt. He can play, but he needs some, he needs some years. Um, was there, I mean, if, if at the top of your head, if you could remember another quarterback in that class that was like, if you're going to draft high, you should have gone after so-and-so, you know what I mean? If you're going to trade up to go get a quarterback. Not anybody in that range. I mean, cause we're, you're talking about second year quarterbacks like Sam Darnold was high. Um, uh, who else was high? No, Sam Darnold wasn't in that draft. Who what was, was that the, the uh, 2019? No, that was the that was the COVID draft. That was 2020. 2020 NFL draft. You're yeah. right. You're right. I can pull that up real quick. Uh, hold on. I, I think I have it right here. So that draft class. Let's just see if we can go ahead and look at the quarterbacks real quick. Uh, let's see. So Joe Burrow was the first overall pick. Joe Burrow was number one, and then let's see who's the next quarterback. Justin Herbert. Uh, there's going to be another one right here. I told, I tried to tell you. You said you didn't want much orange juice. Okay. <laughs> uh, who else? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Henry Ruggs. San Francisco. Jerry Judy. We need an escort. AJ Terrell. CD Lamb. Tackle. 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 Receiver. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah. So the first, the top quarterbacks was Joey Burrow and Justin Herbert. Joey Burrow got hurt last year. Justin Herbert is is a dark. Justin Herbert's an MVP candidate this year. And then there's Jordan Love. But there was, I mean, if we had to think of 2018, think, think of that season. Do no, this 2019. Season. If they went to the they went to the NFC Championship game, and then they got roasted by the by the Niners just because of that defensive front. But how do you how do you justify going up in the draft to get Jordan Love when your quarterback takes you to an NFC Championship game and you were 13 and three? Now the year before they weren't that great, but they still made the playoffs. You see what I'm saying? And so it's like. People want to use the excuse, well, they caught Aaron Rodgers on the decline. You're telling me the NFC Championship game in 13-3 is the decline? And then you go draft this kid, you move up to go draft this kid who was a four-year project. And then Aaron Rodgers says, okay, cool, I'm going to make it even harder for y'all. And goes out 13-3, NFC Championship game. If one or two plays goes a different way there in the Super Bowl, in addition to the MVP... I mean, what happens if, what happens, let's think about this. Let's just, let's dance on this for a minute. What if Green Bay beats the Bucks and beats the Chiefs? What if they were, what if they're Super Bowl winners? Does this drama over the offseason happen? Do they re-sign Aaron and figure out a way to package Love somewhere else? Because even now, Jordan Love doesn't look good, even with the ones. So it's like, this is the thing, like, Here's another food for thought. What if you figure out a way to appease Aaron, which they've managed to appease him for this year? What if they go forward and they say, okay, Aaron, we're going to sign you to a three-year contract. Whatever you want to make, we'll pay. 
but you get in, we'll take your input on draft classes for the next three years and we'll give you two free agents that you can bring in as you want. So maybe this Jordan Love project is a blessing for Aaron Rodgers and for Packer fans to give him three more years. Aaron's got three more years after this year, I think. I think he's got three more MVP caliber seasons. And then it's going to fall off, personally. Damn, like that? Dude, yeah. So Paid Manning. After, oh, his, Pey- after, after his injury. Yeah, that, that was his injury. That inj- Right. But how old was he when he had that injury? 38. What's Aaron right now? Let me, ask you this. Let me ask you this. Had Peyton not had that injury, would he still be playing today? Probably. And you know what that would have done? That means Tim Tebow probably stays in Denver for a few more years, which totally moves everything. Denver doesn't get a Super Bowl. Peyton probably gets one or two. Takes Probably takes one or two from Tom. Oh, yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? Because uh, I forgot. So he got injured and then they shipped him off. Well, what happened was, remember, they had that playoff win the year before. Denver did. They beat the Steelers on that magical play, blah, 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 blah. They got lucky. And then Peyton's, Peyton doesn't play that whole season. And then it's like the Colts had to let him go because they drafted luck. They got lucky with luck. <laughs> did they? Yeah, they. I think they, I mean, luck saw the writing. A lot of these players are seeing the writing on the wall because they have so much information now. Luke Keekley is another one. Patrick Willis is another one. Those guys could have easily gotten two more big contracts, and they said, I got $50 million in the bank. I'm going to invest this. I'm good. I'm straight. Isn't it crazy how an event like that, like Peyton Manning's injury, like that we're in it, yeah, it sets off, you know, a bunch of Triggers a bunch stuff. of – here's another one. We Like we just talked about, what if Aaron doesn't get to the NFC Championship game in 2019? And what if he – what if they said – and what if – Green Bay's like, we're going to play hardball with you. We're out. If you don't want to come to, to if you don't want to come to training camp, fine. We'll roll with, we'll roll with what we got with love. And they make those moves. You see what I'm saying? And I mean, or yeah, it could have, it could have been like that. And Aaron goes wherever he's going to go. You think the drafting of Jordan love, he doesn't make the NFC championship would have been more justifiable. It would have made that love pick. What are you saying? It would make it. Yeah, would it? If, like if they would have, if, a little more. if they would have lost like first round of the playoffs, it would have made it. It would have, like yeah, that's what they should have done. But what if that's not what happened? <laughs> NFL needs an animated series. But that's not yeah. What if <laughs> that's not what happened? So now we're we're dealing with, you know, th- these instances. What if that Peyton Manning trigger keeps Tom in in New England? Right now, what if they won? What if this is his seventh ring or fifth ring? What if it's what if he would just won his fifth because Peyton took two from him? You know what I'm saying? And he still got the drive. He can still play. Belichick's willing to put up with him. Robert Kraft goes to bat for him. Dude, there's so many things that could have, would have, should have. It's just it's it's nuts. But tomorrow, let's get into the uh, let's get into the slate real quick. We'll talk about tomorrow and Friday's games. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the rest of the slate: Patriots, Eagles, Jalen Hurts, Henry Rager or Rager's looking good. Devontae Smith's looking good. Um, what's his name? Uh, Mac and Cheese looking good. Mac Jones. Mac yeah. Jones. Mac Jones looked a lot better than Cam last week, but Cam only got two drives. Mac Jones got five. Mm, you're going against the second stringers. So he did what he should have done. Now, if, now if Mac Jones gets to go with against the starters and lights it up against the starters for the Eagles. Now we got some cooking here, but I think what a lot of people respect that of Mac Jones is his ability to prepare. Like when he was with Alabama, he had Sarkeesian for three years. So Sarkeesian prepped him to go to the NFL. Like this is how you become a pro. This is what you do. This is how you prepare. And so I think a lot of the players like respect that and they know he can play. And it's like, look, if you played at Alabama quarterback, you're used to NFL caliber receivers. Well, now he has that in the NFL. So he's going to know how to put the ball where it needs to be shoulder placement. You know, if it needs to be high or low or away, or, you know, if he needs to change an audible, if he need, he's going to be prepared to do all that. And I think Cam just needs more reps. I just don't know if they're going to let him because they don't want to get him hurt. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, the Pats. Let's look at the line. The line is New England minus one and a half. 
Mm, it's they're playing in Philadelphia at the Link. It's a six thirty game on NFL Network tomorrow. So it'll probably be like in the third quarter by the time we start. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Eagles. I like the Eagles in this one. And then we have Friday, the Chiefs and Cardinals. Andy Reid Andy Reed said that his players are gonna play a half. You're gonna let the starters go for the first half. That's a long yeah, time for the second game against that front and for the Cardinals. Chandler Dude. Jones, DJ you, you Watt. They, you think they Buda do? Baker. You think they do play for a half? Unless and unless pay, unless Patrick gets nicked. Like if Patrick takes a hit and he gets up gimpy, they're like, "You're done, son." That's if he stays clean, he'll play the whole. They'll play the whole half. Who do you like in that one? Kansas City's favored by two and a half. I'll take Kansas City. I'm gonna take Kansas City. I'm gonna take Kansas too. Bengals at the football team. The football team minus four and a half favor. Mm, Fuck them, dude. Bengals. <laughs> All right, the Bengals. I'm gonna take the football team just because I think. I just hope Burrow doesn't play. You don't need to play against that defense. That deep sweat, uh, you know, Jones, you don't, need, you don't need to play against that front. What would you do if uh, Ron Rivera starts mouthing off and he gets a uh, taunting penalty? Like starts ma- ma- mouthing off to the refs? Karma's a <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> That'd be funny. I'm telling you, this is going to bite them in the ass. I just really feel, I just, I feel it's going to, it's good. What I mean by bite them in the ass is these taunting Shit, rules. I got you started. It's, again. Go- <laughs> yeah. it's going to hurt them when they need to like clinch the playoff berth or clinch division. I think that like, or have a winning record. Like you're talking all this shit. And if you have a losing record, you dug your own grave. Oh, well, yeah. How you like me now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep, I do. I think Dallas is going to win the division, but those two teams, like I think Washington has a shot to win the division also. But if let's, let's say, let's say both of these teams, they lose close games because of a taunting penalty to Dallas. That, how, you, how you like me now? That division was hot garbage last year. It's going to be hot garbage this year too. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be the NFC least without a doubt. Uh, anything before we go? Did you watch that? What if Marvel? Yeah, I did. I did, watched the first is it a episode. Series? Yeah, it's a series. The second episode. Is it like week by week? Yes. <sighs> Come on, it's Disney Plus, man. No, you know what it is. Magusta. It's good though. It's 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 really good. It's an animated series that goes on talking about. So the first episode was what if Peggy Carter from or did you watch Captain America? I know who Peggy Carter is. Okay, I'm just asking that. Um, well, get me going. If she got the uh, the the serum instead of. Steve Rogers. So she's going to be all like bulked up? <laughs> yeah, she is. I don't know if you've no. seen that. No. There. Yeah, there's memes floating around. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't seen that. <laughs> yeah, it's good, man. It's basically Captain America with, you know, Peggy Carter inserted in there. But there's also, you know, Steve's also there in the storyline as well. It's good. Um, they're going to have, I think, episode four, somewhere down the line. So I think there's nine episodes. Somewhere down the line, there's going to be a, a Marvel Zombies. Somehow, no shit. Yeah. How does that work? I don't know, man. What we're gonna, we have to wait and see. There's been speculation on how that's gonna occur because it, you, you just gotta watch it. How know? they gonna have a damn zombie Tony Stark when he's wearing a fucking mask? We'll find out. That's just that's that doesn't make any sense. But he's gonna be like oozing green shit out of his mask. Jarvis Jarvis gonna be a zombie too, <laughs> right? I mean, for real. Yeah. Is Vision gonna be a zombie? He's not even a human. See, I don't think I don't know if they thought about that. What is Paul? <laughs> oh, what if we don't have this taunting penalty in the NFL? What if we just left the game alone? What if we don't have silver spoon owners not spitting hot garbage out of their pie hole? How about what if that, James? What if Ron Rivera could let people to choose if they want to take a vaccine or not, rather than call them fuckers? How about that? How about that, Ron? I'll, I'll, with, I love Ron. Ron's, there's nothing wrong with Ron. It's just, I get it. I get it. You are, you just overcame and survived cancer. I get it. You want, you care about your players to be healthy. I get it. But what if you just shut the fuck up? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. What if you just let people live their lives and make a living in the NFL to contribute to your team and win? How about that? 
Although, Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, they are requiring documentation for you to enter the building with your uh, passport your uh, or your your card that you've been uh, vaccinated. They're the first stadium to do that. We'll see if others do it. That'll be interesting to see. And I don't know who made that decision. Who do you think made that? Do you think it was local government or do you think it was uh, Al De- or, uh, Mark Davis? I don't know. How does... That's what I'm asking you. Yeah. What do you think? Pretty sure if I looked up, like, I mean, if you look up what, you know, where these guys lean towards and stuff, that seems to, like, sort out you a think lot it's of a, their... You think there's a political... There's a... There's a political cloud over it, man. The way that the the world goes these days, man, that's always my first. But thought, why does dude. it always got it? Why does it have to I, be I, that? I understand that, and I question it as well. But I mean, I don't know what the fuck, you know. I feel like that. My just... question was, who do you think made it? And you wanted to put that little, let's put that political hat on there real quick. I know I that's wish, just where your mind. It's I that dark it, side. Yeah, probably. That's just where you go. Um, did you see uh, Andy Dalton? His comments on the the. Um, Starting quarterback position over there in um, Chicago. Yeah. Andy, let me tell you something about Andy Dalton. Andy, you better get real comfortable on that bench, son. You better get real. You, hey, you're going to make your $10 million this year. It's guaranteed, fully guaranteed. I hate to break it to you, but as soon as you throw two, three picks in a game, Yahtzee, you're out. Grab the hook. Stage left. You're done. Sit next to Nagy on the sideline. Because the weapon, Justin Fields, is going to go in there and wow the crowd. That's what's going to happen. Don't let Nick Foles get too hot either. You might lose your job to the th- third Altogether. string also. I'm just saying. Yeah. He said his time's now. You're talking that big, big, big game. You better back it up. I saw a meme earlier. It said Nick Foles' career literally, literally went backwards. He won a Super Bowl. Then he was a backup. And now he's a third stringer. <laughs> Dude, he was a third stringer. <laughs> Won a Super Bowl, then went back to third string. That's how that went. Carson Wentz is apparently like walking around ready to go week one, they say. And he got a statue in the process. Who got a statue? Nick Foles. Yes, yes, he did. Talk about a psych job on Carson Wentz. You know what I'm saying? The disrespect. Better put some respect on his name. Yeah. Why don't you stay healthy, Carson? Maybe we will. Carson, you're on a first name basis with him. Why not? Tell that big son bitch walk in here. I'm like, God damn, son. What's up, Mr. Wentz? Nah, fuck that. I'm calling that little, I'm calling that fucker no Mr. Nothing. The only people I call Mr. are people who are older than me. I ain't giving nobody no, like, you better know who I am. Small Mike. Not today, dude. I'm, I'm getting, as, as, as the bullshit comes out, it's just, it's getting bigger. That's just the way I feel. It's like, you know what? No, I got something to say. I'm, t- I'm tired of, Seeing the just nonsense go on and nobody, nobody say anything. Everybody just falls in line. Yeah. Let me just conform. Let me just do as I'm told. I'm a man. I'm not 40 yet, but I'm a man. Like Mike Gundy said. People, I was talking shit to one of my buddies ago, and I sent the. Uh, there's a gif of a little kid in like a cowboy outfit with fringe and like a cowboy blue metallic shirt. And he's all like doing tap dancing in it. And I go, what's up, bro? I go, this is you waiting for hard knocks tonight. And he goes, I ain't no punk P-Rod. I'm a man. And so I sent him the gif of Mike Gundy. I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> I was like, talk that shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. As long as we entertain people, we'll, we'll do what we do. I don't know. If nobody watches, they don't watch. But some people are watching. Some people are listening, too. How can they listen? Head on over to Spotify, search Paul Rodriguez Show. You'll see the little logo pop up. Give us a follow, turn notifications on. That way you don't miss any show that is uploaded, which is daily. We out!